Welcome back. Our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day comes from ESPN Sports Center. This is the first time the men's NCAA Tournament Sweet 16 won't feature either UNC, Duke, or Kentucky since 1979. Paul, you and I have talked about this throughout the course of the season. When the Blue Bloods are down, you know the season's weird. Granted, Kansas is still around for the time being. I don't have Kansas going very far. I think I'm having, I, have, I might have them losing in the second round of the Sweet 16, but this is a very, very bizarre season where the Blue Bloods in college basketball, just a whole bunch of bagels all around. No question. I mean, Duke obviously had some issues with a couple of the highly uh, re recruited guys they brought in. Uh, North Carolina is just really young, you know, and mm -hmm. they still probably need a point guard, but they're really young. They're going to be good next year. Um, and Kentucky, you know what? You can't roll over your roster every single year and expect to hit on every single player. Um, you know, he needs a new model because that one and done thing is over. It's done. You bring up a good point, though. North Carolina is young. They'll be done. They'll be better next year. What we've normally seen, especially with those three programs, Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, when they have a down year, they're usually good for the next four to five. They're usually reloading, getting some fresh talent in there, and they're probably setting themselves up for a pretty deep run over the next half decade or so. Yeah, I mean, Roy Williams' model has been, you know, bring in really highly recruited, recruited guys who aren't maybe quite one and done guys. Mm. And so, you know, their junior, senior years, you know, he's got a bunch of guys that are fourth and fifth year. If you look at the teams that he's won the national title with or got to the final four, most of them were loaded with fourth and fifth or, you know, three, third, fourth and fifth year guys. Uh, Duke and Kentucky, obviously, their model is a little bit different. Um, but I think both Duke and Kentucky are going to have to rethink it because it hasn't quite yielded the results that they're looking for. We talked about Ohio State and Oral Roberts earlier in the show. You, you mentioned that you didn't have Ohio State going far. I got to put your feet to the fire. Who'd you have winning this thing? Uh, well, again, I think Gonzaga is probably the, going to win it, but you know how you have to, you know, offset the other people because, you know, if there's 100 polls, 98 of them pick Gonzaga. So <laughs> I did two polls. One of them, one of them I had Illinois winning, and the other I had Baylor winning. Wow. See, I, I have Gonzaga. I did one bracket. I got Gonzaga beating Illinois, but Illinois, I really do like. I think they're a team that if Gonzaga gets knocked off along the way, I can easily see Illinois or Baylor winning it. I got Illinois and Baylor in the Final Four, I believe, on that same side. So I, yeah. I don't like either. I don't hate either of those picks. Those are both pretty good picks. Yeah, I think I think Illinois is really good, to be honest. Yeah, you want to talk about teams in the Big Ten? I think Illinois is a team that over the course of the season got stronger as the year went on. They knocked off really good teams, and we found out just how good they really were once we got to the Big Ten tournament. That is our time. Thanks to Paul Zeiss for joining us. Thanks for your calls. Thanks for your tweets. As I say often, it is you guys that make this show great. We're here for you seven nights a week. Don Marico, this one's for you. We love you. We miss you. Long live the Steel City Voice. Good night. <laughs>